Hello, my dear friends. I really hope that you are doing great. Welcome to our today's class. It's our 10th lesson on the third topic of Form 3 work, which is called Newton's Laws of Motion. As usual, let me comment by giving you the quote of the day, which states that it's never too late to become what you might have been. We shall discuss that quote at the end of our class today. So today we are looking at more examples involving the Newton's Laws of Motion and specifically the part involving the frictional force. So the first example reads that uh, a wooden box of mass 30 kg rests on a rough surface. So remember, if the surface is rough, it means that frictional force does exist. So the coefficient of friction between the floor and the box is 0.6, but A, we are required to calculate the force required to just move the box. So remember, the force that is required to just move the box is a force that will help in overcoming the frictional force. Remember, when the box is at rest, it tries to resist any motion because of uh, the force of inertia. Yeah, because of inertia. Remember also from Newton's first law of motion, we did say that a body will naturally want to remain in its state of rest unless an external force is acted. Therefore, the force that is required to just move the box, that is the frictional force. That is the frictional force. Therefore, so for part A, frictional force, we know that is given by uh, the coefficient of friction multiplied by the normal reaction. So frictional force, we denote it by FR. Then uh, mu, uh, this letter is mu, is representing the coefficient of friction. Then R, of course, is the normal reaction. But because uh, they want us to find the frictional force, we are already given mu or the normal, uh, that is, the coefficient of friction so we need to find the normal reaction remember action and reaction forces are usually equal but oppositely directed therefore if you want to find the reaction force we'll simply take the mass of the body multiplied by the gravity which is just the same as the weight of the body which is mg uh, but only that reaction does act in the uh, opposite direction such that if the weight is acting downward then the reaction will always act upward so reaction is given mass times gravity. Therefore, our formula for frictional force becomes uh, the coefficient of friction multiplied by the mass of the body times the gravity of that particular body. Therefore, the coefficient of friction we are given as 0 0.6. Remember, it is a constant because coefficient of friction is a ratio. Uh, that is, it does not have uh, any units. So coefficient of friction is 0 0.6 multiplied by the mass of the body. We are told that a wooden box of mass 30 kilograms, so the mass is 30 kg, multiplied by gravity, which is always uh, 10 newton per kilogram, or sometimes uh, 10 meters per second squared. Therefore, if you take this product, that is 0 0.6 times 30 times 6, you'll obtain 180 newton, because that is a, a frictional force. So frictional force is equal to 180 Newton. Remember the SI unit for force is Newton. So the final answer for frictional force has to be uh, in Newton. Then part B, uh, we are told that if a force of 200 Newton is applied to the box, with what acceleration will it uh, move? Then we are given gravity. Uh, that is acceleration due to gravity as uh, uh, 10 meters per second squared. So we know that um, we can sketch just this particular motion. We are told that a force of 200 Newton is applied to the box. So assuming this is my 200 Newton force applying to the box in the right hand direction, then we know that friction always tries to resist the intended motion. Therefore, if our applied force is acting towards the right hand direction, the frictional force will act in the opposite direction, which is the left hand direction. Therefore, friction for, frictional force is acting towards the left, which is 180 Newton. But remember, force is a vector quantity. Therefore, if frictional force is acting towards the left or in the opposite direction, we denote it by a negative. Therefore, uh, for us to find the resultant force acting on this particular body, we'll simply take uh, the larger force. Then that is, we'll take the summation of the force, uh, the pulling force and the frictional force. So, but because frictional force is acting in the opposite direction, therefore it becomes a negative. So it is negative because friction acts in the opposite direction. Therefore, the resultant force acting on the body, F, is given by uh, the force, that is the force applied 
uh, plus the frictional force. But because the frictional force is acting in the opposite direction, therefore it becomes a negative 180 newton. So negative because friction always acts in the opposite direction. Therefore, this will give us the resultant force acting on the body as 20 newton. But from Newton's second law of motion, we did say that the resultant force acting should always be equal to m a that is the resultant uh, applied force will be given by uh that is the rate of change of momentum of a body which is just the same as mass of the body times gravity therefore the resultant external force which is 20 newton must be equal to the mass of the body which was 30 kg multiplied by the acceleration of the body because they want us to find the acceleration with which the body is moving at therefore if i divide both sides by 30 i'll have uh, acceleration being equal to 20 divided by 30 which gives us 0 0.6667 uh, meters per second squared as our acceleration so the answer i've left it uh, correct to four significant figures remember if you have to approximate the final answer in physics it is recommended that you leave it correct to four significant figures. Then uh, part B, that is uh, question two. We are told that a block of metal with a mass of 20 kg requires a horizontal force of 20 newton to pull it with uniform velocity along a horizontal surface. So remember, because this particular uh, metal block is being pulled with a uniform velocity, that simply means that uh, the force of pull, or the uh, that is the force of 50 newton, uh, which is used to pull that particular uh, metal block, must be equal to the frictional force. So, uh, because the body is moving with a uniform velocity or at a constant velocity on a horizontal path, that simply means that the frictional force is equal to the force that is pulling that particular block. Because remember, it is the frictional force that is required to be overcome in order for that particular uh, block, uh, that is metal block to move. Therefore, the force being overcome is the frictional force and therefore the frictional force uh, will be equal to the force which is pulling that particular block, which is uh, 50 newtons. So we have said the reason is because the block is moving with a uniform or a constant velocity. Therefore, we know that frictional force, remember the question wants us to calculate the coefficient of friction between the surface and the block. But for us to calculate the coefficient of friction, we need the formula for the frictional force, which is frictional force is equals to the coefficient of friction multiplied by the normal reaction. Then we just substitute the values that we have, then we, found, we find the unknown. So coefficient of friction from this formula uh, will be given by frictional force divided by the normal reaction. So because you already have the frictional force, which is uh, 50 newton, we find the value for the normal reaction. So remember, normal reaction is equal to mass of the body times gravity. So we are told that the block has a mass of 20 uh, kilogram. Therefore, the mass is 20 kg times gravity is always 10 meters per second squared or 10 newton per kilogram. Therefore, uh, gravity is 10 meters per second squared or newton per kilogram. Therefore, uh, the normal reaction R shall be given by 20 times 10, which gives us 200 newton as our normal uh, reaction. Now, from the formula of frictional force, that frictional force is equal to the coefficient of friction multiplied by the normal reaction. We can make normal reaction to be the subject of the formula by dividing both sides by R, which is the normal reaction. Therefore, the coefficient of friction will be given by the frictional force divided by the normal reaction. Then we did say that frictional force in this case will be equal to the pulling force because this particular pulling force is causing the body to move with a uniform velocity. Remember, the force that was overcome before the body started moving, that is equal to the frictional force. That's why in this case, the pulling force is equal to the frictional force. Therefore, uh, the frictional force is 50 newton divided by the normal reaction is 200 newton. Therefore, we'll find our coefficient of friction mu being equal to 0 0.25. Then again, remember that coefficient of friction is a constant or it is it is a ratio, therefore it has no unit. Therefore, the coefficient of friction is 0 0.25. Our next example reads that uh, a horizontal force of 12 Newton is applied on a wooden block of mass 2 kg placed on a horizontal surface. 
it causes the block to accelerate at 5 meters per second then you are required to determine the frictional force between the block and the surface so in order for us to find the frictional force first of all we need to find the resultant force acting on that particular body because we know that the resultant force shall be equal to the summation of the pulling force and the frictional force but we know that the frictional force is acting in the opposite or in the negative direction therefore resultant force acting on the body uh, from Newton's second law of motion is given by resultant external force is given by the mass of the body times the acceleration of the body so we are given that the mass of the body is uh, 2 kilogram then uh, the acceleration of the body we are told that uh, uh, that is it causes the block to accelerate at 5 meters per second therefore the acceleration of the body is 5 meters per second squared therefore the resultant external force acting will be given by 5 2 times 5 which gives us 10 newton but we know that the resultant external force must be equal to uh, the total forces uh, acting on this particular body so the resultant force shall be given by uh, the force which is pulling it which is uh, fp that is the fall the force that is pulling that particular block then plus uh, the frictional force the frictional force is fr but because the frictional force is acting in the negative or in the opposite direction therefore it becomes negative fr so the reason the negative is for the direction in which the frictional force is acting so because this particular block is uh, um, it is moving it simply means that the force of pull is greater than the frictional force therefore the resultant external force acting on the body will be given by the force that is pulling it plus the frictional force but frictional force is acting in the opposite direction therefore it is a negative so if i make frictional force to be the subject of my formula i'll have uh, the frictional force coming towards the left hand side that is crossing the equal sign therefore it becomes a positive therefore frictional force shall be given by uh, the force applied that is fp then the minus the resultant external force which is the accelerating force therefore uh, the frictional force will be given by i'm just making fr subject of the formula by taking it towards the left hand side and the accelerating force towards the right hand side therefore it becomes a negative therefore frictional force is equal to the force applied minus the accelerating force remember the accelerating force is also called the resultant force or the resultant external force therefore the force applied we are told that uh, a horizontal force of 12 newton is applied therefore the force applied is 12 newton then minus the the uh, accelerating force or the resultant external force which is equal to ma which was uh, 10 newton so we simply take the force applied minus the acceleration force accelerating force which is uh, 10 newton so the difference will be equal to the frictional force which is 12 minus 10 which gives us 2 newton therefore 2 newton is the frictional force that is applied that is being uh, applied on that particular uh, horizontal that is the body the block that is placed on the horizontal surface then remember the frictional force will always act between uh, the contact of the wooden block and that particular horizontal surface then uh, remember that frictional force also acts in the opposite direction that's why it is uh, we are using a negative here so we've come to the end of our class today uh, I also have an exercise here uh, before we conclude I have an exercise here that I do recommend that you should try at your own free time to gauge whether you have internalized the concepts uh, of the calculations that you have just done uh, up here uh, so we've come to the end of our class today but we need to discuss the quote of the day the quote of the day stated that it is never too late to become what you might have be have been that is it's never too late to become what you might have been so the quote is just encouraging us not to give up on our dreams uh, just because we encountered some setbacks along the journey recall that setbacks are very essential components in your journey to success because the setbacks will help you to learn some key lessons hence accelerating your mental growth and remember whenever your mental growth uh, increases or whenever your mental ability increases the chances of you uh, growing or reaching your dreams faster are, are also high because uh, when you are 
mental when you are strong mentally you will be, be able to make the right decisions towards achieving your destiny and lastly remember that the harder the battle the sweeter the victory so thank you very much for accompanying me until the end of this particular lesson i do not take it for granted in case you are new to the channel kindly hit the subscription button and also turn on the notification bell so that whenever i upload a new video you'll get notified also in case you know any student or anyone that you honestly think could benefit from this content kindly 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 refer them to this channel which is called kind tuition academy thank you very much for giving me the company until next time this is kind tuition academy